Welcome to the Dropout Multi-Millionaire Podcast, where we talk about tactical business strategy, building high-performance sales teams, and growing your business. If you're ready to break free from the status quo and join the ranks of the Mavericks, the Rebels, and the Renegades who refuse to conform and instead build multi-million dollar businesses, then buckle up, because here we go. Welcome back to today's episode of the Dropout Multi-Millionaire Podcast. Today is the fourth in our series on sales training. And today we're going to talk about the close, box four. Now, as you recall in the first three episodes, we talked about in the intro, we set them at ease. We do a transition statement to overcome that first objection. Box two, fact finding. We know that we have to go after our why and our when. We need to know why they're buying, why they're coming to see me, and when they're looking to buy. So we can determine if they are a serious buyer or if they are just a tire kicker. In the third box, we talked about the presentation. And in the presentation, we talk as little as possible, as few words as we can. We do pause for effect after everything we say. We do check-ins to make sure that they understand what we said before we move on. And we do that by getting a positive affirmation statement, okay? Today, we're gonna talk about the actual close. And when I talk about a close, I talk about, we are assuming that this close is going to happen. If we have done our job in the fact-finding phase, if we set them at ease up front, then this close should be a simple statement. And here's what we're gonna do. Now remember what I keep telling you, the close is technically happening in the fact-finding phase. The presentation is really about telling your client why they're buying your product and getting them to agree. And then it should slide right into the close. So the first principle we have to Keep in mind here, much like I said in the presentation, the close, we need to also talk as little as possible, okay? Don't oversell. Don't overtalk. And technically, we'll get to this in a second, but when you make your closing statement, you shut up. Don't say anything else, and you wait for them to talk. So remember, at this point, we've overcome the objections at the beginning. We've gone through the fact-finding. We found out what we need to know. We're into the presentation. In the presentation, we got them to continually give us these positive affirmations. Do you understand how the product works? Yes. Do you understand how it's going to make or save you money or benefit whatever it is you're trying to benefit? Yes. Does this seem like something that, that works for you based on what we've talked about? Yes. They've gone in positive affirmation, positive affirmation, positive affirmation, and then we slide right into the close. And the close is simple. Well, based on everything we've talked about then, are you ready to get started? Or based on everything we've talked about, would you like me to show you how to get this going? Okay, I've just assumed because they said yes, 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 yes in the, in the, in the presentation phase, this deal's already done. There isn't really a close here. It's a simple statement. Well, based on everything we've talked about, you seem to like the product and the pricing. Are you ready to get started? Would you like me to show you how to get this thing going? All right, so you're telling me now, Hey, Brian, that doesn't always work. You know what? You're right. In fact, I've talked about this earlier in the video series is understanding what a no is. Understand that whatever your close rate is, it is. If you close 25% of the people you talk to, 75% of them aren't going to buy. Your job in this process, primarily in the fact finding, when you're looking for the why and the when, is to find out if you have a serious buyer or a tire kicker. Okay. So you, you have to make sure you do that. If you miss all that and you get to the end and you do the little simple close, by the way, based on everything we talked about, would you like me to show you how to get this started? And if they say no, or if they say, well, we want to think about it, then I have to ask myself a question. Did I get the why and did I get the win? If I got the win and their win was right now and they told me that two minutes ago, and 10 minutes later, after I tell them about the product, they say, no, we have to think about it. Then I either didn't get the win or I have a different problem. And potentially, and in my, my, my experience, I have found most of the time it is money related. And remember, we did our budget, right? We found our parameters. We said between 5,000 and 30,000, would you like them to start in the 20,000 range or 15,000 range? And they may have said yes. And you walk them through this whole process with their why and their when, and they still get down here and they tell you no. What do we do? Most salespeople are like, well, let me get my objection sheet out. 
And they start trying to overcome their objections by using, you know, powerful statements that are going to try to make them change their mind to do something they're ready to do right now. And I think that's a mistake. You have a problem you haven't figured out. You have an objection that you have not overcome. And if we assume, in my experience, that that first objection is money, then we need to back up and punt, go to what I call our bottom dollar offer, and see if we can find out if it's money or not. Okay, if we're going to assume it's money, and we originally told them in our in our case here that we had products from five to thirty thousand, you did your parameters, and you got a number from them somewhere in the fifteen thousand dollar range, and you said, okay, I got their I got their budget right, and you've done this whole presentation all the way through fifteen thousand. The when is now, and they say no. I need to find out if it's money because that's the easiest one to find out. And it's the fastest one that you will lose a customer and they'll go up the street, take your $15,000 price, use it at another person trying to sell the same product who will offer it to them for 10 and they'll buy that. All because you either missed it or they lied to you. But either one of those, we're going to find out if that's what the case was. So I will always say, well, let me ask you something. I know you said you were looking to do this now and we've been talking about this $15,000 product. Let me ask you a question. Just for argument's sake, and I know you like this one, but I do have the model down here at 5,000. Would that be something you'd be interested in taking a look at, or are you happy with the $15,000 model? Now, when I say that, if the customer comes back and goes, well, yes, I would be interested in the $5,000 option. Can you explain that to me? Bingo, you had a price problem. You either missed it, they lied to you, but this is how we found out at the end. And we get to drop back into our presentation phase, start from here, right, and go back through. Well, the $5,000 model clearly is not as robust as a $15,000 model, but let me tell you the benefits on how it works. Do four or five simple explanations on the difference, and then go, based on what I've told you now, would you be more interested in the $5,000 model? And if they say yes, bingo again, you found the problem, and then you roll right into, well, then based on what we've talked about, would you like me to show you how to get this going? Would you like me to show you how to, to get this paperwork done? Would you like me to show you how we can get this thing in your hands, on your roof, whatever it is you're trying to sell? Okay? If they say no there again, then you, you don't have a buyer. You have that 75% mark in a buy versus the 25% who are, okay? So we get a no, we go, you know what? Let me ask you something before, before we leave. They do have the cheaper model at 5,000. Would you like me to explain the difference in benefits between the two, just for your own benefit? And if they say yes, you had a money problem. If they say no, by the way, I really like the 15,000, then we have somebody who really is just trying to shop. And they're either a no, or we're going to have to follow up with them later. And then the, the follow up later, by the way, how we use the same bottom dollar technique to find out if it's a money problem then. So that's how we overcome the objection of money in the close. Now, please keep in mind, as I've said over and over, you will never sell all your clients. You only have so many hours in a day. We know you're only going to close a certain percentage of them. And you need to learn what a no is so that you can effectively move past all those people who are not going to buy, so you can effectively sell the ones who are. If you are in an eight-hour day and currently doing two sales a day out of 10 people you talk to with a 20% close rate, would you rather continue at that pace or would you rather learn what a no is so you can get rid of the 80% that aren't going to buy and instead take that same amount of time and close four and double your income? Okay. Don't ever, don't ever get upset because you don't close everybody because you're never going to close everybody. Learn what a no is. This is a couple chapters in the book so that you can move on to the folks that are going to buy. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. That wraps up this four part series on sales training. This sales training is based on a two day training program I've implemented all over the country, trained thousands of salespeople, sold billions of dollars over the last 15 years. This is a subset. If you'd like more information, you can get my latest book, which is called No, The Psychology of Sales and Negotiation. It's 41 Lessons in Negotiation. Get that on Amazon or my website, www.brianwillmedia.com. You can also look at my mastermind, which is called The Force Multiplier Mastermind. 
We talk about things like tactical business strategy, building high-performance sales teams, profitable measured growth, and historical P&L analysis of your company to predict the future. These are the options. Take a look at the website. If you're interested, drop me a DM and come back for the next episode of the Dropout Multi-Millionaire Podcast. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you would like to get more information on either of my books, joining the Force Multiplier Mastermind or my one-on-one -on -one coaching programs, you can find me at www.brianwillmedia.com.